some information about the Playdate last week, so we covered a bit, but they had the Playdate update presentation this week. And we were kind of thinking um, we might not cover it just because there might not be anything significant. But I think, you know, we really felt it warranted to bring it up again just because, man, this presentation, for me, 10 out of 10. This is like how you do a presentation. Amazing presentation. And I think, you know, maybe I'm going to be an example of this. But last week I was like, ah, it's pretty expensive. I'm a bit on the fence. I don't know about it. Watch the presentation. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I probably get it. <laughs> like, it makes two of us. Yeah. It was clearly a good presentation. I was absolutely on the fence. Oh, man, now too much, whatever. Now I'm like, whoa, I need to pre order one of these babies. Yeah. And, you know, they were really, really good cool. about how they covered the pre orders because we didn't have that information last week. But essentially, pre orders aren't going to happen this month. It's going to be next month. You can sign up, they're going to give you enough warning. And then they're going to do it Tesla style. So when I say that, the way that Tesla does their pre-orders, they open it and then you basically get an order number when if you order straight away <clears throat> and then you just become part of the queue. So, you know, it's crazy because there's a lot of open information about this because people have shared. But essentially, if you order like one day later, that could mean you're getting it in a year versus like getting it in three months for like something like a Tesla. And you, you got to get the same type of thing with this. Like it sounds like they have units, but they don't have you know, millions of units of it. So if you order straight away, you might be lucky enough to get it shipped out to you quite quickly, but it also might take a bit of time. So you really actually have to see how that goes. Um, So as I said, they're going to limit the stock, but then it's not going to be like stopped. It's They're going to build more with time and you will get it eventually. And they're pretty open that you just have to be patient with them. Um, Some of the new announcements though, that were really cool. Yep. So we have the play day. It still looks exactly the same made by teenage engineering in terms of the design and everything like that. It's an amazing group of um, engineers that they have over there. I think it's Sweden for memory. Um, but yeah, they, they announced the stereo dock. So it's like a dock for your play day, but it does so much more than that. It has a stereo speaker. It has like a music track that you can put in so it can charge your play day. And the absolute most important thing of all because you've got to have it on your desk, of course, is that it's got a pen holder. Yeah, and I've got a I've got a yellow Lamy fountain pen well, that looks almost exactly like the pen that they're giving you with it. <laughs> That's the thing I love. They go, like, it's got a pen and holder, two so holes. we have to build a pen for this then. <laughs> of course. I, the delivery and how they approached this was just absolutely awesome. It was really cool. They're just like, this is ridiculous, but we're, we're going all in on this. I love it so much. And like but it's, the design and everything like that, it looks like, you know, the old Mac it right. looks totally like it with the yeah. little interface. It looks so, so cool. cute. It's so cool. Uh, I, I think it, I don't think I don't think it's gimmicky at all. It actually makes sense. It's a really cool way to charge your device. It's a cool way to use it as an alarm clock. It. I actually think it's a really well, practical we, little device. Alarm clock. Do we actually know it's an alarm clock? Because <laughs> I that is very very important to me. As you there's know, there's a clock. There's a clock, as we can see, but we don't know if it's an alarm. But that clock, does not yes, mean it's, it's an alarm very clock. very important to you. <laughs> I I am double checking because. There is more information on their website and in the lead up to the show, because we all watched the presentation in the lead up to the show, I just double checked everything. And I found that they also have got a cover that they didn't talk about at all in the Prezo, okay. but it's like a really cool magnetic cover for the play date. Does it come so, with it? No, or that's it's extra. Kind of accessory. So that's okay. 29 US extra. The stereo dock, they haven't priced it. And they also, it doesn't seem like... It, I don't think you can order it when the pre-orders go live. It doesn't look like that's going to be the way it works. Yeah, it's coming up later from what I saw. Yeah, mm-hmm. which kind of like is throwing me off a little bit just because, you know, I, you know, with the shipping to Australia, we have to see how that plays out, but it could cost a lot to ship this to Australia. So for me, mm-hmm. I might just go, might need to hold off and maybe that means I won't get it for like a year, but I don't know. I'd, I'd hate to like spend so much money on shipping a dock later and then also shipping the plate earlier. What, you mean hold off till the second day of the pre-order so you can get it a year later? <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying, yeah. No, I'm saying until the stereo docks are uh, available yeah, as yeah. well. Um, yeah, no, this looks really, really cool. We, we should just run through the specs like super quickly. The one that mm-hmm. kind of worries me a little bit is the, the screen is a reflective black and white screen. There is zero backlight to the screen. Um, it has a huge amount of power of like, you know, eight hours active, but it actually has a standby clock of 14 days. I can't see anything about an alarm, Swinney. 
Never, never Uh-oh. assume an alarm. Never assume. Well, an alarm. by I, the way, in case I, you guys are wondering, is... we we had this uh, quite a few episodes ago. We we're talking about the game and watch that came out recently, and it's a game and watch and no alarm. In case you guys are wondering, so <laughs> I think the alarm thing must have something to do with battery on these devices. Must Maybe. like destroy them somehow. I, I look, Swinny. I don't actually think it has an alarm. Like when I keep like looking. There's, there's a reference I to a clock, not, but not alarm. That's what I said. I did not assume. I've been burnt before. <laughs> yeah, because people are lazily saying an 80s style alarm clock, but nothing in their material at all says alarm. Mm. Um, yeah, and, you know, some of the other things we've already seen, like the crank and everything like that. But the next one that I wanted to talk about briefly is, you know, it's got a 180 megahertz uh, processor, which is like fine for what it's trying to do. But the awesome thing is that it supports Lua, and C, programming language, really, really both cool programming languages. And then with that as well, kind of a bit similar to what Analog uh, doing with the Analog Pocket and Game Boy Studio, they have an online video game creator called Pulp uh, where you can so create good. your own it games. So, good. Yep. so, I mean, this whole ecosystem is really awesome. We already knew about, you know, that you're getting two games per week. I don't think they, we had the specificity it was going to be two games every week for 12 weeks in Season 1. Season one, to me, implying that there'll be a season two. And then, Swinny, did you want to cover some of the special sort of game developers that are sort of developing things for this and where they're at with that as well? Yeah, so if anyone hasn't, uh, they kind of, they showed off mainly the titles and I guess some of the graphics of a lot of them, Mm. um, but they only focus on a couple some that we've already known about for quite a while, like uh, Keita Takahashi's, um, like, I can't remember the name of it, but the one where you rewind time with the crank. Yeah, that's um, the main one that they keep yeah. showing, yeah. Uh, Bennett Foddy from, you know, Quop and getting over it. It's just wild to me that Quop is still in the, like, gaming stratosphere. Like, that is a game that's just, I remember playing as a fun little, like, you know, Flash game or whatever years ago. I was probably playing at your place one time, I remember. But um, And the probably the they've spent a, quite a bit of time uh, with Lucas Pope, mm. who was actually featured... Um, who's the creator of Papers, Please and Return of the Obra Dinn. Uh, oh, Return of the Obra Dinn being play. a game that is like almost like visually exactly. Is, yeah, exactly. L- along it, the lines of the play you date. Maybe it so, on performance. But he showed off a bit of work in progress of a game called Mars After Midnight, which looks really, really cool. <laughs> like really a great cool. tone to it. Uh, we don't know much more than the visuals that he showed I off. I don't think he knows much more either, no. he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, we'll, uh, that's, we'll see where this goes. <laughs> and it's coming up in the B-roll, but that, that's what I loved about it, that he's just yes, great timing, Swinney. Um, <laughs> he, he just like was so honest about it. And the fact yeah. that they kept it in like that, they're just like, oh, I'm playing around with it. It's really cool. I don't know what this is going to be. It's kind of fun. Because it's well, not, to whole- be clear, it's not a season one game. So, no. yeah. But I mean, look, the whole the whole thing seemed really honest to me. Even the way they said, mm. hey, guys, you can pre-order, but here's the deal and we may not be able to get to it and there may be a sh- shortage yeah. and all that stuff. I like that honest conversation. And I think maybe that's why you and I got sold on this thing now. It's that well, honesty that came out. And, and, you know, you can see it in the clip, um, but just for audio listeners, which we have a lot, right? It's, I love that you used the crank. You've got like basically a little peephole or like a, sorry, mail slot of your house or something or, you know, your door. And you can actually use the crank to open up the little mail slot. And then you like look through and you can see like the little character on the other side. It's very cool. Like, I I don't know, this crank, because it's a unique feature, you don't have it in other games. I'm like, it does really open up some weird possibilities of games that will work so well for this that just wouldn't work in the same way on anything Mm. else. Uh, Like, I I think, you know, I don't know, my wife's going to kill me if I order this. But, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm very likely to order this. Mike is, where where are you sitting on it, Swinney? Oh, I want the hell out of this. Oh, really? So we're all, we're Play-Doh boys. (laughs) This is the Play-Doh podcast. (laughs) Welcome to the Play-Doh podcast. I mean, Penny. Um, Sunday, the 13th of June. I don't know if I want it so much so that I'll, like, get it day one or whatever but oh, okay. I'd, I'd like to eventually get one yeah. yeah 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 i mean this is such like i do wish the price point was a bit more you know competitive or whatever you want to call it i get that they won't sell millions of this so they just can't mm. well maybe they will if we they already have three suckers that weren't going to get it last <laughs> week and this week just because of an ad but i just think this <laughs> would will. be something that if you saw an eb games and it was like 149 Oh, like, yeah. Obviously, ideally Purchase. 99. And I think Probably, the technology yeah. and everything about it, mm. they could sell it for 99 if they were selling millions of it. 
it, it's just something that people would look at and go, wow, this looks really neat. Like, this looks really cool. Like, if this, this came is. to Australia, what do you reckon it would be? Two ninety nine. I'd I said was it thinking last week, yeah. but it's not going to be two forty nine. It's going to be like a two ninety nine price point. It, no yeah, doubt. it's not going to be three hundred. Yeah, like yeah. for sure, right? Because it's like it's like one hundred and seventy nine US. Yeah, but with the conversion, it's like what two forty nine if you were to actually convert it to Australian plus the tax included, probably a two forty nine. Yeah, but so there's no way we're going to get it for that. It's two fifty five, like with GST in Australian okay. dollars. So yeah, without shipping <laughs> it, without anything extra. So and it's going to be like three hundred, man. Easy. No, just it's in a, the lot. Just it's in a the lot, isn't it? Just in the B roll, they showed off like actually, yeah. they showed off some of the other like developer games, and they had that Mario Paint looking one, which is yeah, awesome. it looks freaking oh, phenomenal, like man. Mario like, Paint music maker, I should say. Yeah, and one, it's so. one of those ones where you like, unlike you know the Atari VCS, all this other kind of stuff. There's no other way, really. I think you can experience some of these games if they've been built around the crank, which. Smartly, in my opinion, all the devs seem to be going, how can we use the crank? <laughs> like, what can we use the crank for? Well, I mean, you, um, could, you could replicate it with a thumbstick. You just rotate it. Yeah, but it's, it. not, it's just not the same. I know it's not the same. Not the but same. You, could even, you could even get an attachment for your controller that's like a little crank, but it's not on the side. <laughs> yeah, you just move it that way. Seamless, seamless. You, you can kind of replicate yeah, right. it somewhat on other consoles. <laughs> no, it looks really cool. Different. It looks it's different. Cool. It looks super cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. All right, uh, let's get into my favorite segment, the bargain bin for the week commencing the 13th of June, 2021. As always. 